Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us on tonight's Web3 Town Square. It is going to be super exciting. We have an amazing panel of speakers tonight to talk about one of the hottest topics in online and on the internet and in the world right now. So super stoked. Let's give everybody a couple more minutes to get in here. Um, if you are waiting and you would like to share this with your network, we highly suggest that you do. Um, because tonight's topic is going to be insane. So hang on to your horses and we'll wait for everybody to get in. What's going on, everybody? Good to be here. What up? Hey, Bird Kaz, good to have you, have you here, guys. Trev, Hello. we need to get you in as a host, Yes, mate. yes, yes. Let's get... Sorry, it took a little bit to get up on stage there. How is everybody? Doing good. Doing good. Stuff. Doing good. You all. Welcome, David. Thanks for uh, giving up some time. Kaz, joining us from Arcade. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, Likewise, sir. Now, I'm going to put a little caveat over today's broadcast. I've come down with the flu. I've decided to uh, just dose myself on pseudoephedrine, so my brain is firing at a vibration that is making it very hard to concentrate on anything right now. So I'll do my best uh, through the spaces, but I've got my partner in crime, Mo Meta, at the helm, ready to uh, jump into things, go a little sideways. How are you, buddy? I'm great, mate. I love this conversation. There's so much about AI gaming that's just going to bring so much new flavor to it that I just can't wait to get into it. Do we have Ned joining us today? I can see him down there in the audience. Yeah, and that goes for uh, anybody, really. Uh, so it's an open discussion about the impact of AI in the gaming space and to talk a little bit about what's been going on there. And everybody who has an interest or a question, you're welcome to come and join us on stage, ask your questions, uh, and we'll do our best to get to you in order. Uh, and yes, JP, I can see he's down there. Let's bring JP up on stage. Just give us a few moments while we get the last of the speakers up. Uh, and maybe to kick things off, David, do you mind it sort of kicking things off and bringing us up to speed with what's been going on over at Altered State Machine and uh, the, the big FIFA game that's going on there? Yeah, actually been a, been a whole bunch of things going on at uh, SM. Um, so we have uh, been doing the open beta for the FIFA game, so testing up the first um, sort of bit of functionality uh, for the older state machine platform. Um, we have just been approved for the iOS um, uh, Apple Store, uh, so we'll have the Apple version of that out soon, which is exciting. Um, Congratulations, mate. That's a big... Yeah, cheers. <laughs> it's been, yeah. It was a bit of a process. <laughs> New method. Um, it's been yeah. a number of years since yeah. I've deployed an app to the App Store, and, and I can remember it being nothing but headaches. I could only imagine what you guys are trying to uh, accomplish with them. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a bit skept skeptical about um, about uh, the sort of space that we're in um, with NFTs and stuff, um, and they've been kind of treading, treading lightly. Um, and so it's been a bit of an onerous process to, to go through, but um, we got there in the end by the looks of it. Um, so that will be, you know, we'll have a we'll have an iOS release out, out shortly. Um, and then following on, on that, the, the full official um, uh, release with additional functionality. Uh, so that's been a really interesting process to go through. Um, off the back of that, we've got um, the, the, the Next Legends Muhammad Ali boxing game um, that we've been uh, dutifully working away on, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, and of course, the, the uh, sister game to the FIFA um, game, uh, which is uh, AFA League, which is uh, a more involved version um, where users get to actually play around with AI in a, in a, in a much more sort of expert mode kind of way. Um, which uh, will be coming off the back of that as well. So heaps going on at Alter State Machine. Um, plus, you know the the chat tools, the um, the animation tools, uh, um, and, and a bunch of other things um, that you know me and me and Shara have recently done a talk on around around stuff that we're doing as well. So yeah, lots going on. <laughs> And uh, David, just while we're getting everybody up on stage, I can see we've still got uh, JP trying to come up. Um, 
I just touch on those gyms very quickly before we go into a very broad AI game centric kind of conversation. We do have the gyms opening. When are they opening? And uh, can you tell us a little bit of what to expect with that? How to prepare ourselves? Um, I remember they're opening this afternoon, right? Um, let me just check the announcements channel on that. Ooh. Bit of alpha. Straight out of the gate, uh, David. That's un- unusual for you, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I thought I'd seen an announcement saying that they were coming out. They're, they're coming out this month, in by the end of the month, but I thought it was this afternoon. Um, yeah, there was so today. Be... Today's the day, apparently. That was the announcement that was made. You're free, yeah, you're free to yeah, say whatever you cool. like, mate. Thanks. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you're going to see, so it's, it's the first little bit of functionality, you'll be able to see it, um, see your, um, your, uh, sorry, your character and, and play around with it in 3D and, um, and, um, it's kind of, uh, just sort of the beginning for the rollout of the TNL stuff. Um, but I don't want to steal too much away from, um, from the experience. So, um, when it when it does launch, I encourage you to jump in there and, and have a poke around and see what's going on. Absolutely, uh, mate. It it feels a little bit like it, it. I don't know how you feel about it, but it, to me, it's just a bit overwhelming. Like I would describe it as a wave. It, it feels like everywhere I look right now, AI is sort of impacting. Um, you're very very deep in it. What are you seeing as some of the more interesting things that you guys are using AI, AI for at the moment, or that you're, you know, playing around with? Yes, yeah, I, I mean, the, the recent push in the AI space is going to be pretty disruptive across the board. Um, I think, I mean, it's going to have its hype cycle as well. There's going to be a bunch of um, sort of uh, nonsense out there and, and um, like you expect to see in, in the middle of these kind of hype cycles. but. Um, it's definitely not all hype. Um, we are going to see some some industries completely disrupted, and and um, by what AI can do, you know, some of the some of the, even the most fundamental things when you think about um, uh, using the using these tools um, in different ways, like re- replacement of operating systems at the core, um, where you don't have someone sitting there designing. How an operating system is going to work you just have an ai and it creates um, a user interface on demand whether it's voice or text or um or graphics on a screen um it can create all that on demand for personalized for a user it, you imagine how sort of disruptive that is and when you think about you know ai can can produce its own code okay once that gets refined and and becomes um uh, you know the the AI models get better at producing and more uh, producing more reliable code. Um, does does the you know industry of application development still exist? Um, will we have to code websites anymore, front ends at all, or can that be done on the fly based on your requirements of what what you need to see in front of you at the time? So when you start thinking about that's kind of where AI is going and, and how that can apply to things like gaming and, and worlds um, that you and stories that you explore, um, it does really um, show you the kind of disruption that's on the way. Wow, man, that's mind blowing. So am I right in what I'm hearing that there's the potential for us to all experience the same games or the same environments in a unique way? Well, shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and specifically, you know, that's some of the stuff that um, my my innovation team has been playing around with um, a little bit is is these kind of dynamic environments where you describe a a simple world in a simple way, um, and then your personal AI kind of interprets that that description for you, um, and you can play through it concurrently with other people um, and experience, you know, the same same story but from different. Um, and have different experiences, which when you think about it is kind of the human experience in a way, isn't it? I was about to say exactly the same thing. It sounds, you know, eerily human um, that that would be the case. It's, uh, it, it must be a, a pretty disruptive space even when you're involved. It's not only the disruption that's taking place as people adopt and figure out ways to do it, but even the tech itself disrupting your roadmap. Like, I, I'm, I'm interested to learn a little bit about if you've had any experience or if that's been the case where just breakthroughs or, you know, 
rapid improvements in the technology has completely changed the way that you've planned or built or, or, or structured a game environment? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we were pretty disruptive from the beginning and um, but a bit ahead of the curve, but even despite that, um, the, the space has moved very quickly um, and we've had to um, we've had to look at things in a new light, things have gotten more efficient, um, there's been new sort of breakthroughs and ways to do things um, that we've, we've had to very quickly adapt to. Um, and if you don't, if you're not ready to, to um, you know, throw away your, your, your work a little bit and adapt to um, changing technology, then you're not going to, you're not going to be in the race in this game at all. Um, so, you know, we've had to do that a little bit, um, which has been, um, it comes with its own challenges, but if you, you have to be, you have to be willing to and, and um, to jump in there and, and try out new things and um, explore new avenues for, for doing stuff um, or else you'll sort of be left behind. I, I can only imagine, I mean, even in our little business that's, that, that, that's only just scratching the surface, we almost feel like we're revaluating every few months, like, <laughs> okay, what functions <laughs> do we now need to keep and, and, and how can we reutilize the resources? And, and, and it must be mental in your world, mate. Um, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I'm conscious of Taz being on stage. I, I saw Nebu came and joined us. I just want to shout out to Nebu real quick and then I might throw over to Kaz. Uh, I'm interested to hear from you, mate, about what uh, you guys have been seeing in the, in the market and, and, and what you're getting excited about. But first, Nebu, how are you, buddy? Welcome. Yeah, I'm great. Thanks, mate. Um, difficult year this year. <laughs> There's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, mate, uh, I'm not the wisest, but I've got a few years behind me and I can tell you they get more difficult and faster as they go by. So, uh, you know, brace yourself. <laughs> yeah, I've been feeling that one. <laughs> uh, nice one. Uh, and uh, uh, Kaz, how are you, buddy? I'm good, man. Uh, thanks for having us on. And, you know, it's always a pleasure to be on, on stage with... Uh, some of these guys, you know, uh, uh, have a tremendous amount of respect for David and, uh, you know, uh, all of you guys too. So really happy to happy to be here. Yeah, it's awesome to have you. Um, before I forget too, I know uh, we advertised Bordy while Musk was going to join us. I did get contacted by him not that long ago. Uh, unfortunately, he's had an unexpected conflict and won't be able to make the space today. But uh, we're boxing on his spot, but I just wanted to acknowledge that for people who may have turned up uh, expecting to hear from board we'll, we'll definitely have him on the show in, in due course um, and with that said uh, Kaz yeah what's been going on in our case world mate what are you guys excited about oh, a lot of things man um, you know we're we've been uh, slowly building out an esports platform that's meant to really you know uh, bring a lot of invo bring a lot of um, Opened a lot of open the gates to the esports side, it's esports side of things for all gamers because I think you know, uh, esports for the most part, the stars have to align. You have to be in like, in the country and in the right location where all these types types of uh, competitions are going on. But I think you know with Web three and all of that, um, it's kind of broadening the horizons. And you know on that topic, I think you know what, what we're seeing in the esports side of things and competitive gaming is uh, a lot of cheating and hacking being done using AI. Um, I think uh, just a few weeks ago, I was watching like uh, basically AI that was controlling a, uh, uh, what was that, what's that called? Um, Call of Duty character. And um, the, you know, it's just kind of, it's just insane. And we're also seeing new technology being involved using AI to catch cheaters. So it's like a, this crazy cat and mouse game that we're seeing happening on that on that side of things and you know i'm actually curious to, to, to hear uh, david's uh, opinion on that like uh, how do we foresee uh uh that that sector of gaming uh evolving yeah um that's that's really interesting i think it, it has to i think you kind of hit the nail on the head with that last but your sentence is that it kind of has to evolve um and into something new you know when when you have you can spend your whole life trying to um, and a whole bunch of energy trying to fight against um, new technology um, or you can find a way to kind of incorporate it um, and I think that's what 
the the space is going to have to do. Um, I it would be cool to see more sort of um, IRL and in, in person esports events. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of these of esports and and um, you know like watching the international tournament and uh, for Dota and things like that um, and uh, Street Fighter matches and um, all those sorts of games, but. Um, it does present a challenge when um, when it's a fully uh, sort of online tournament um, and uh, people can just sort of replace themselves with a with an AI and, and take away prize money. Um, it's gonna it's gonna make things difficult. Uh, and and you know using AI, then you get into this battle of using AI to detect AI, but then using AI to get around the detection of AI and. Um, and that becomes the esport at the end of the day, right? <laughs> yeah. the AI hey guys, can I just jump in for a second and say, Kaz, can you give us a quick breakdown of how Arcade fits into this whole Web3 environment and what sort of problems you're trying to solve and just give us a quick overview, is that possible? Yeah, for sure. So uh, for, for those of you guys that don't know, Arcade is basically an infrastructure for the uh, Web3 and uh, GameFi infrastructure. And uh, the problem we're trying to solve is that I think a lot of the, the early adopters, the NFT buyers, they're not your traditional gamers. They're somewhere between collectors and yield farmers. And then you also have the gamers that are kind of curiously looking at the space. But they're not your investor types who are actually willing to spend, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars on assets to allow them to play the game. I mean, of course, there's going to be a few, but I think the majority are kind of like, hey, I can spend $500, I'll get a PlayStation with God of War, I'm happy for like two months, you know what I mean? So that's one of the problems we identified early on. So what Arcade uh, intends to do is, on one side, it wants to make assets and, um, you know, assets and tools available to the gamers, whether it's, you know, fluffs or land in, you know, in, in other sides or Luvium, you know, all these different games uh, or, or, you know, ASM brains, you know, we've got like a, a, a ton of ASM brains and a few bosses. And we intend to make these assets available to gaming communities, gaming guilds, esports teams, that sort of thing. On the other side, what we have is a, uh, what, our, what our actual platform, what it is, it's a proxy that allows our token holders to participate in the economic models of these different games through our platform. So it kind of comes back to, you know, your early adopters that are in the space who might not be your mainstream gamers, but more of like kind of your yield farming collector crowd that have been drawn into, you know, all of these different projects due to the uh, due to the opportunities that lie as far as tokenomics and uh, all of that goes. Our platform basically gives them a gateway to participate and test out these different models without actually having to play the games. And, you know, it, 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 I can get into the weeds a little bit, but the way it works is that the actual players, whether they're guilds or esports teams and uh, that sort of people who are utilizing our assets, uh, a portion of their activity is basically funding the reward pools that our token holders are able to kind of participate in. So it's a, it's a cross of DeFi and um, asset, asset, asset lending. And uh, the third component is basically we took our smart contracts that were developed for the DeFi applications. We made some tweaks to it. So instead of being a, a kind of a DeFi based app, it's more of a esports application where you have a pool for red team versus blue team and a sort of a winner take all model. Um, and you know, I don't want to get too uh, too technical, but that's kind of a really high overview of what we're building. Oh, no, I appreciate you running that down for us. And uh, as I hear all this sort of asset lending, the donuts protocol keeps coming into mind. Now I'm just going to jump over to Eight Bit quickly, just to invite him into the room. Good friend of mine. Now he's coming from the gaming space. He's out there. He's doing the test techs at the moment. Eight Bit. What sort of test techs are you doing at the moment? And what would you like to see as far as AI goes coming into this gaming space? What are your thoughts on it, mate? What's going on, gentlemen? Um, yeah, so I'm not necessarily a builder or developer, so I'm approaching this from a, a gamer's perspective. Um, 
right now uh, I'm heavily involved within the Gala ecosystem and I've recently been playing the tech test for Mirandus, which is a MMORPG open world game, uh, a lot of players, uh, PVE type style game and you know they plan on using AI at least to make the creatures and some of the NPCs smarter which is uh, what excites me about what's going on in the AI space and right before I, I jumped on this call I, I literally got off playing the new Zelda game and if any of you have played Zelda um, you know there are a ton of different NPCs in the game that you interact with and you know, I, I like these games or games in general because uh, games are a way for, for me to kind of zone out and immerse myself in a different world. And part of that immersion is, you know, the, the interactions that you have within the game. So I'm really curious to see um, how AI can be used to make smarter NPCs, smarter enemies, um, smarter allies within the game uh, so that you can't really spot the pattern because that kind of breaks the immersion when, when you're fighting a boss or you're dealing with multiple NPCs and you start spotting the similar dialogues, the, the copy and paste patterns that that, uh, that they're doing, which eventually, like I said, breaks that immersion. It, it, it lets you know you're within a game. So I'm curious to see if anyone here is, is doing anything with AI as far to, as, far as um, you know, creating smarter NPCs or, or, or using it to create more immersive worlds. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here to listen and learn and, and get some insight from you guys. Yeah, thank you. Definitely looking, uh, looking at that. So that for me, it's, it's about bridging that gap between tabletop gaming, like D and D and, and things like that and video games. And for the long time, you know, that, that gap has been closing slowly, slowly, slowly. But with the dynamic worlds and stories you can create with with uh, something like D and D, where you know it's reactive and and um, the stories are, are varied um, because you have a, a human intelligence there um, uh, as a game master uh, building this world um, and reacting to things in real time. You can create um, you know very dynamic stories versus. Uh, with with really bad graphics, the graphics in D and D tabletop games is terrible. It's your imagination, <laughs> and um, and you know you can supplement that with you know um, miniatures on a on a table, and, and there's been like little apps and stuff to date. But um, but that's the sort of downside is that you can't have um, uh, you can't have you know nice computer graphics react in in, in real time in that dynamic kind of fashion. Um, and then on the other side, you have video games, which will be slowly getting better over time. But you're right. Um, once you hear the story about um, the arrow to the knee for the you know twelfth time, it kind of breaks the um, the, the illusion a little bit. Um, and um, but the amount of effort that is taken to to uh, to fill these games with content to date is just is just a you know the, the amount of people involved to to create a, an NPC that has dynamic, that has animations and has a dialogue and has a um, a path that it wanders and and uh, fits within the story narrative um, is a credible amount of effort. And you're going we're gonna start to see AI bridge the gap between those two things, where um, eventually they'll become sort of indistinguishable from each other, where you can have these sort of dynamic worlds. Um, and and have dynamic events going on at all times, um, and and continual continuation of story um, beyond what was initially sort of written. Um, so that's that's the kind of future that I'm really excited for, and we're specifically working on tools to enable that. So this is part of the original sort of composable agents um, idea that um, uh, Alter State Machine was kind of born on was taking different discrete AIs. So you have a LLM and you have um, some reinforcement learning and you have um, a text to motion uh, diffusion um, model and you have um, uh, you know a whole bunch of other AIs involved in creating an NPC and you compose them together to create something that 
um, that you can interact with and is dynamic. Uh, and um, that's what we've been kind of working towards as a project from, from the start. And now we're starting to see the technology is really accelerating, particularly in the, the open source space. That's, that's going to enable this uh, a lot quicker than I realized maybe two years ago. Um, but, um, but yeah, we've, we're, we're definitely working on that. Can I just lay down a scenario quickly? One of the games that 8-Bit just mentioned was Mirandus, which I own a tavern in and I own an Avatar 4. Am I thinking too far ahead when I would like that tavern to have the Avatar as a bartender in it? that can work off an AI so that I'm not even in the game. But as people interact with that bartender, avatar, in that tavern, can the AI have a language model where it will know about the previous conversations it's had and be able to communicate with the people in the game? Like, rather than just walk into up to a stall and push craft, actually have someone there you can interact with who knows the area of that game. Am I thinking too far ahead or is this possible? Um, no, it's definitely possible. Um, so, uh, I mean, we could go ahead and build, build that right now, to be honest, um, with the technology that's available. So definitely not for thinking too far ahead. You'll start to see games developing in this direction, um, for sure. Great, right, I'll, I'll send you a DM and I'll hit you up tomorrow. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no confirmation that it'll be available tomorrow, but um, it is definitely, you know, that kind of capability that we're working on, for sure. David, um, I've got a, a question about brains, because I wasn't born with a hell of a lot, but since I've met you, I've, I've acquired a whole lot more. Um, I want to get a sense of what the... Uh, the effect of ownership is going to have in these early games, or is that still something that will become more apparent as the technology and the use cases and the environments expand? So, I mean, this is an important thing for Alter State Machine is the question of ownership. Um, so if you put effort into developing and training and um, these AIs and building these stories and, and skin them good at, at things, then um, much like the, you know, a good portion of the uh, Web3 gaming space, we believe that um, the ownership should, of, of all that effort, should um, be retained by the, the person who put that effort in. Um, and that's that's what the, you know, one, one of the things that the old state machine protocol is trying to solve, is um, creating a, a protocol and and platform um, that enables users to take ownership of their, their assets and their effort um, and then um, sell it on an open marketplace or trade it or, um, or uh, you know, take it from one game to another game or environment to another environment or whatever they want to do with it is in their hands. Um, so that's, that's essentially what we're trying to do um, with ASM. So. How does that work in gameplay, though? Uh, if I, let's say uh, we're talking about Next Legends, right, and I've trained my boxer, my boxer's winning lots of fights, can I just sell my boxer's brain and keep my boxer and put another brain in there and train that one and sell that one, or do I sell the boxer and the brain together? Like, has this sort of stuff been thought through, or, or is there... Um... Definitely has been thought, thought through. <laughs> um, so the the brain and the boxer are uh, decoupled. So brain holds the memories, and the boxer holds the physicality. Um, and uh, and with a combination of those two things, you get um, an agent that performs a task. Um, you can decouple them if you want. Um, I would say that your brain probably needs to, if you put um, your brain in a, in a new body, it probably needs to learn, do a little bit of training to learn how to control that body. Oh, that'd be wilder. Um, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, but you, you absolutely can decouple them and, and, and swap them around um, and, uh, as far as um, how it's working currently. Well, I... Um... Every time I learn more about this and, and, and you guys leak more and more um, ideas and functions and things that you're working on, my brain just continually gets scrambled um, trying to figure out how that's going to be um, 
used by people, right? Like you're putting some tools out there and some pretty interesting ones, but ultimately it'll be up to people playing with them and figuring out what they want to do with them that will ultimately drive it, right? Yeah, well, that's and that's an interesting part for me, and that's kind of what I want to want to just get them out there and, and then see what sort of emergent gameplay happens and, and what people do with them. Is is that is actually the thing that fascinates me the most as well? Uh, maybe eight bit. Uh, I'm not sure, mate. We've we've not met. G'day, nice to meet you, on Trevor. Um, have you had any experience with that sort of stuff in gameplay? Have you come across anything um, so far that we might not be aware of? Before I continue, a quick word from our sponsors that make the show possible. experiment with different um, you know skills and assets and trade them across different platforms you know I always think of things like Fortnite or Roblox but I'm not very deep in into gaming so I wanted to hear from you if there was anything that you've seen where you've seen some unusual kind of opportunities for trade and, and um, optimizing or customizing your game experience yeah I mean th there's a few uh, as far as uh, and I'll give you an example again with with um, with Miranda. So uh, within the Gala ecosystem, there are a few different projects that kind of interact with each other. Um, so there's a project called uh, Boxverse, and there are they are essentially these avatars that do contain a soul. The soul is an NFT, and the box is an an, uh, an NFT itself. So the soul does contain specific attributes that you can take out of the box and then put into another box similar to what uh, you guys were discussing earlier um but not only that you can you can use your box character in a multitude of different games in in different manners so um for example i can take my box if i own uh, a, a a box and i also own a character in, in uh, mirandis I can pair those two assets and get a bonus within that game. So if I pair my box with my character in Mirandis, it gives me a, a, a plus 25% uh, HP boost, um, which is, again, part of what's cool about what's happening within the space that is not necessarily, or can't necessarily be done in the regular Web2 space, or, or at least we haven't really seen uh, too many use cases like we're starting to see now. Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as far as like, as, you know, being able to interact with a multitude of different uh, assets within different games and, and pair them and, and uh, move your, your skills or traits around or, or combine assets to, to uh, create a new type of attribute within a new game. Um, that's being done right now, and it's it's cool, but it's very early stages right now, so everything is kind of ex experimental. Um, but those are the few examples that I've seen so far. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to see seeing some more stuff being done like that. So, look, games have always had AI, right? Even in its most simplistic forms, any NPC is just some basic form of AI. David, is anybody else? solving this problem that you're aware of? Who else out there is tackling it at the level that you are? And what are they able to achieve at this stage? You must be across the broad range of the ecosystem. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of people tackling a lot of different um, problems out there. I think, you know, we, we sort of got pretty early on, um, uh, jumped on this pretty early on before the, the hype all happened. Um, and we've had a particular focus around the ownership part, which I think is an important thing to solve, um, and uh, and have been supporting the open source AI community as well um, during that time. So um, you could say the whole open source community in general is 
as as far as I'm concerned, the most advanced in the space, um, or or is rapidly catching up to um, the proprietary ones like um, like um, uh, OpenAI and, and Google and, and Microsoft. Um, so um, so if you want to yeah, you want to talk about specific specific people doing specific things, um, it's it's definitely the whole open source community together who's been pushing this forward, um, which which we're big supporters of. But we are specifically we're working on bringing these tools together into a platform that allows you to to retain ownership over them. Um, and I don't know many people doing that. Can we uh, talk about world building? Because that's something I don't technically have the skill sets to do. And I see all of the creations that can be made. Is that going to become easier for me to create environments using AI with word prompts? Where are we with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's intention behind some of the tools. Um, and kind of come to my point earlier where, you know, we're trying to merge that tabletop world with the, the, the gaming world. A little bit that's kind of what you do in, in the tabletop space and if you could take you know your your description of a of a dungeon um that that person might be in a, G, a, a gm might be doing in a um, tabletop game and then have that materialize into a, in a world that you can explore on your computer or through vr that's kind of the dream isn't it but there's a whole bunch of foundational technologies that we need to refined before we get there that um, ASM has been specifically working on and you might have seen some of the leaks from um, Lux Varen um, with some of those generative tools that we've been working on, 3D generative tools, um, narrative generative tools, art generative tools, motion generative tools. Um, and these are some of the fun fundamental things that are required to, to bring that to reality. And the whole space is kind of moving forward, um, researching these these pieces, uh, and we've had some pretty good results with the stuff that we've been building. Um, so, yeah, over the next couple of years, you're going to start to see some of the stuff pop up where you can um, you, you can do exactly um, that as described. Yep, that's incredible. I just want to shout out to the rest of the room right now. Thank you all for joining us today. Welcome back to another Web3 Town Square. Um, this is an open platform. Come on up, guys. Raise your hand if you've got a question. We want to hear from you. We've got about another 20 minutes left. Um, we might go a bit over. We'll see. But um, please, come on up and say hi. Uh, Apit, you got your hand up. What's happening? Yeah, um, I had a question. So I, I'm sure you guys are aware, but when Bing came out with their chatbot, um, after a few days, they started having issues where the chatbot kind of started going rogue and um, it was starting to essentially fall in love with it, it's the, the people that it was talking to <laughs> and so when world building and when creating NPCs and, and these characters that kind of have their own mind do you guys foresee this as being an issue that you may run into where you have these NPCs that kind of go rogue and start doing their own things uh, that would be an interesting issue to, to start occurring uh, with these uh, worlds you're building here. Yeah, it definitely would be. Um, but just like in real life, you know, humans can go a little bit rogue sometimes. Um, not everybody you're going to meet is going to play by the rules and um, and uh, and be you know what you expect. So um, I kind of I will kind of expect that behavior from AI to a certain degree. There are things that you can do, um, you know, safeguards you can put in place to, to make sure that, um, you know, they're staying on the rails that you've, you've given them. Um, but it's kind of up to the developers uh, how, how strict they want to, to make that. Um, because, you know, the less strict that you make it, the more dynamic and, and um, immersive the world might get. Um, to touch on that too, um, you know, and excuse my ignorance, but I, I know that ChatGPT, um, as far as keeping keeping it running, you know, it costs a lot of money per day, right? Uh, I've heard and I read a few articles that you know it costs a few million to keep uh, ChatGPT running because there's a certain cost associated per every dialogue string that uh, it produces. So. Is, is this also an issue that you will also have to deal with when creating 
these these AI chatbots or worlds where there's going to be, I, I guess, a massive server cost to keep you know these things running. And if there is, you know, does that mean that there would be costs that need to funnel down to the player as as maybe a subscription fee, etc. Yeah, for sure. Um, just just like uh, just like all all things, um, you know, there's a time point in time when the thought of having an MMO to the level that we we have them these days was cost prohibitive. Um, but uh, as time has gone on, um, hardware has got more powerful, and storage has got cheaper, and uh, compute power has got cheaper. Um, Software has got more efficient. Um, where where the, the costs of these things go down. So you'll keep on seeing that trend. We've got a lot of efficiencies to, scre- to squeeze out of the AI space um, yet. Uh, so, you know, those pro- those um, sort of compute power prices are going to go, um, start to de- decrease. Um, you know, if you look at things like the, um, the A100s that GPT-4 was um, uh, trained on, um, and their successor, which uh, we've, we've purchased, just recently purchased a bunch of the H100s, um, the, uh, they double the compute power of the A100s that GPT-4 um, was trained on, and that's just in one generation. They've, we've doubled the power, that, the compute power, for the hardware that GPT-4 was trained on. Um, so um, we're still, we're going to see the hardware progress and and drive those prices down um, and then you're going to start to see the models um, uh, become um, more efficient and with things like gaming um, what I've always said is that um, you wouldn't you probably wouldn't you would probably train a, a model for a game specific use case and a much narrower set of um, data than you would for something like GPT-4 which is very generalized um, you wouldn't need that level of um, generalization for an NPC in a world. It wouldn't need to necessarily be aware of who Kim Kardashian is, um, for example. So you can um, you can kind of uh, get some efficiencies around um, making your um, your models you know uh, more specialized and specific for their environments as well. So there's a whole bunch of places you can get. Um, these efficiencies and, and as technology grows um, it always trends to towards that thanks David all right Kaz you got your hand up we'll go to you and then I'm gonna invite crypto overlord to have a speak after Kaz what's, what's your question yeah uh, so question for David <clears throat> so you know for the uh, for the goblins and the uh, boxers who use the uh, the dot platform to you know kind of build the designs was was that sort of an ai procedural generation technology or like uh, how did that work and can that can that be utilized to build a world like landscape and all of that yeah so dot dot um was uh you know as a project that was born out of necessity for us that we um that we started working on um and it can do some really cool things it is uh generative um uh, generative but not machine learning um and we have made a whole bunch of enhancements to it from the its first iteration which was basically for the a for all stars um essentially was its first version um and then and then we kind of built on it for, from there to, to where it is today as a tool um but uh but we are making um uh, with the ai concurrent ai research that we've been doing we're kind of starting to merge those things together um to empower dot to to create things like um more complex things than just characters whether that will be a dot product going forward or not we're still yet to see but um we have been specifically researching that um, functionality around creating environments perfect thanks Kaz. any other follow-up questions for that or should i invite a crypto overlord to have a chat with us 
Uh, so, sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just uh, one follow-up question. And uh, the you know the 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 designs and uh, the uh, items it would create it, is that being ported into like Unreal Engine directly, or it, 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 does it require some level of uh, human interaction to get it to the end product? The um the idea behind futurist platform is that we don't need all that uh, human interaction. Is that we have an asset registry essentially for interoperable NFT assets to make them actually interoperable. So we have the um, uh, the data standards and the files that are required to go into uh, each environment that it might go into already there in place. Um, so so that's definitely one of the things that we've we've considered with uh, Futureverse and, and its platform um, to actually make things interoperable. It's easy to talk about interoperability but creating an nft and and you know putting a a, a um glv behind it or an fbx behind it is is not actually making it interoperable you have to have these predefined data standards for it to go into um places because those things actually matter when designing worlds and, and spaces nice one all right <laughs> That's uh oh sorry, Cash, you still there, buddy? Oh no, yeah, no, no. Uh, thank you, David, for the explanation. Uh, that's pretty cool stuff. All good. Uh, yeah, the whole Futureverse tech stack. There's a lot to unpack there. I mean, it's all those custom runtimes and everything else in line to uh, make this all interoperable. Uh, Crypto Overlord, thanks for joining us up on the stage, buddy. Uh, what would you like to share with us? Hey there, thank you so much for having me. I'm super honored to speak amongst such amazing minds in the space. And I'm a huge fan of all things Futureverse, especially ASM. Um, I'm actually joining here from Walker World, which is an ASM and Fluff partner and an open metaverse experience built with Unreal Engine. And uh, we recently partnered with a project called Open, or not Open, I'm sorry, we all know Open AI, In World AI. Excuse me, inworld.ai. And it's actually really cool. And I was prompted to share because you had mentioned what companies are already accessible for some of the AI. And you can already design characters, give them names, backstory, and choose their voice tone and hobbies, strategies, personalities. And it's actually really cool because. I've already been building characters and I'm assuming in the future I'll be able to integrate my crypto walkers and actually create custodians and characters that will be hanging out on my land once we mint it in the future. And that's just one simple layer to this whole AI thing. But, you know, when a lot of us think about it, we think, oh, bosses and challenging and who's scamming or cheating. But I'm just honestly really excited about the social experience of everything. And I can't wait to see how it plays out with music and art and hosting events and what kind of aspects. Someone mentioned a bartender, you know, like how cool would it be to have like your drinks, NFTs minted in the metaverse, right? And you got custodians selling them. Like my mind just goes crazy. So I was just excited to share about this in-world AI, put it on the radar for some people because it's fun to play with already and give a shout out to Futureverse. David, you're awesome. I love what you're doing. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the future when we're all actually having these conversations, you know, in our avatars and hopefully in one of these worlds that one of us built. So just can't wait for it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, man. The, um, yeah, the in-world AI stuff's really um, interesting to play around with as a tool. Um, I believe they're using GPT-3 at the moment, um, which would be really cool to see a version using open source AI um, that people can own, but really excited to see how the space is evolving, um, both on the, um, the open source and on the sort of closed source uh, proprietary side as well. Um, a lot of really cool things going on. Yeah, really well said, Crypto Overlord. Really appreciate you joining us up here. Thanks for that, David. Atari, up on stage. Brother, what's going on? Brother, hey. what's up? GM. Hey, guys. Hey, Atari, how are you? Hey, I'm good, good. Um, it's always a pleasure. I'm so happy you guys are having this space. First of all, um, it's funny with Crypto Overlord was saying, like, my uh, 
my favorite phrase is I always say I miss the future because, uh, you know, most of us in this space, it's like we see the potential of this thing. So it's uh, just trying to enjoy the journey and be in the now. Um, but just a couple questions. I'm very careful. I'm not going to ask any one questions or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of posts from DNA Block, and I wasn't sure if I know, like, I saw a tweet from Aaron saying that was a portfolio company, which I wasn't sure what that meant. But I was just curious on is there any affiliation with the future verse on that? And is that something that is is coming up that we're going to be able to use as like creators i just it really intrigues me to see uh that type of you know ai or, or whatnot or like user-friendly creation tools so just want to know if you can speak to that at all david yeah big fan big fan of um of them i can only only talk on based on you know my my recent my experience with them and their team um i know that yes they are um, invested in by futurists um and I've, I've, uh, I love getting on Zoom calls with them and talking about um, uh, things that we can do together. And we have been, uh, sp specifically my team have been talking recently about um, some of the AI integrations, which is really cool. Um, other than that, I can't say too much more, but i um, big fan of their project and, and they're doing some cool stuff. Okay, cool. And just while I'm up here, I just wanted to ask just your, your opinion, because I know you're so deep in this space. With all of the, the mid-journey and stuff going on, I mean, is there going to be a lot of legal backlash from from these, you know, these current AI things just pulling, you know, images all over the internet? I know you guys focus on, on owning the IP, and that's a big part of the Futureverse. Um, is that something you're going to see spin out of control with uh, with legal? Yeah. We're already seeing it. Um, yeah, that's gonna. It's just gonna get worse. Um, and and I think anybody building the space really needs to be conscious um, of what they're doing and, and not um, not rip off creators essentially. Um, and uh, I think I think you know if you're building a project, you need to maybe step back and and, and think about your approach. Um, because uh, it's very easy to just go, you know, all guns blazing in and and, um, and build these things, but um, you do need to think of the consequences and, um, you know, whose work are you building them off, right? <laughs> so it's been something that, that we've been concerned about and, and specifically designing around from the beginning, um, you know, with the AI art stuff um, and, and the style filter stuff that we've, we've been developing to enable creators to, to take owner of ownership of their style um, is, has been some of that, um, that um, innovation that we're specifically wanting to do around ownership. Um, but but uh, take that and, and, and um, sort of copy that model across all forms of AI is, is what we, we intend to do. It's a word awesome. that, right? Um, if what about the content that AI creates independently? Like if I fall in love with a NPC bartender that's serving me my favourite drink in the metaverse, uh, and it's an AI <laughs> creation. Who do I go buy it off? Because I want to take that bartender home to my borough. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a complicated <laughs> uh, thing. Is is uh, you know, if if you're capable of it. If, and AI is capable of falling in love. Um, then that, that's a really hard is that the point? It's me that's falling in love, not the AI. As you are you that's falling that's in love. Okay. Me. The AI has AI no concept of love. Hey, you know. <laughs> um, then whoever owns that AI, I suppose, you got to go and say, "Hey, mate, can I have your um, your uh, brain? Who owns? <laughs> 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 controls well, the AI? Anything in this conversation, Dad? I need to buy the brain and and the body that goes with it. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it depends on what did you fall in love with, the three D model or the, the the intelligence behind well, it. Well, if it's an NPC, and I know we're getting a little bit wild here, but you know, <laughs> if, if AI created this NPC from some prompts mm. or or just due to a response to develop its its sort of ability to self develop the game, whatever extent that is, mm. and I fall in love with an AI created asset that nobody technically owns, the AI owns it. I mean, mm. Do I buy it from the AI? Oh. Is that the copyright case that I did? <laughs> to, 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 like... 
this might actually be a legit case that ends up in court one day. We don't know. It's going to be. <laughs> uh, it's a ridiculous case. Uh, I don't know. Of the, you know, use case of the law. So we can, you know, <laughs> uh, sounds like so, sounds like Trevor's Trevor's uh, pseudoephedrine's kicked in. He's writing a C phrase on the back of matchboxes <laughs> and sliding them over digital bars, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. It was your I character love, mode. Love it. It. it was the bartender that was serving our favourite drinks. You know, <laughs> had me at home. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Hey Trev, um, I was just, check, just checking in on you buddy. How are you feeling? Still with us mate? <laughs> uh, we're all good here mate. Um, the question really was, is, is copyright. I was reading a little bit about this um, in-world AI race um, and you know there was this conversation uh, from the journalists that I was reading and gathering my information about, about the, the idea of copyright. Like, How does that impact game owners, game developers? How does it impact asset owners? You know, If I own my own AI and, I, and, and create something do I own the IP of that within the game? Am I able to take that IP and build my own stuff with it? I mean, it's a, it's a very murky... Um... I mean, if, uh, under, under Alter State Machine, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, so if you have a look at Thingy's art, for example, is um, the art that your Thingy makes is created as an NFT that you own and can do whatever you want with. Um, so if you sort of expand that use case to to um you create an ai character um and then you mint that as a memory in a brain then that's something then you own that brain then that's something that you own mm -hmm. and uh, can i just ask is that is that brain attached to the nft or to the digital identity uh so the nft and then the uh, under this scenario i mean um there's nothing to say that we we can't you know architect things in different ways for different purposes but under the scenario um, it's connected to the brain that's connected to the um, digital identity the NFT that's con then is owned by that digital identity got it okay cool crypto overlord you got your hand up there buddy yeah I want to play devil's advocate with a bit of speculation here from what I know about some of these futureverse assets because to answer your question Trevor, I feel like if perhaps the bartender was a thingy, we've been seeing these sneak peeks about 3D assets being created. So I wonder if there's going to be a way that AI in combination with the thingies, maybe, you know, with a party bear DJing a soundtrack in your bar as well, and maybe a buzzy or something that's collecting the resources might be able to build or print of some sort a bottle and a custom label for you. That is something that might be in the future, right, David? I mean, that would be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> I love that one, though. That is a goodie. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I just, I just want to touch on music while we're there, David, because we know everybody loves music. It's going to be massive for adoption. And it's something that everybody can tinker with. No one's really afraid to walk up to a piano and start pushing on the keys. And as this AI is going to make it easier for all of us to create music, and it's something that we can all play with and enjoy and we're not intimidated by, where do you see that adoption curve for, say, the Futureverse, say, for what's being built, being one of the verticals? Um, yeah, the music stuff's uh, super inter interesting and, and further to my point earlier, we have to work with creatives when we're doing this. This is this is 100% our mission. Um, anything we do um, in the creative space, we want to, um, to, to go on this journey with creatives because they're the, the people and, you know, creating the data that's trading these um, AIs to do the amazing things that they're doing. Um, you can't forget that 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 fact um, with with anything that you're doing. So um, so we're 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 specifically um, working on things in that space to to do it with the creative um, industry. Yeah, I just I just want to create my own sort of on chicka wow wow when you walk into my <laughs> burrow, you know, you know, I made it, I own it, that's mine, created with AI. See, that's the kind of stuff where we get that uh, that freedom over what we're building with this new technology. And as it comes back to before, do I own that? And you said with Olden State Machine, 
I would own that because it's attached yeah, to my. So, well, that's uh, that's what you get for doing this properly. Um, is is that um, is is that uh, you can you can answer those questions definitively, right? <laughs> and that's that's how that's how we are we are approaching it. Is that we want to have whatever we build and, and release in the space, we want to be able to definitively answer those questions. Say yes, you own this when you create it, and yes, it's not stolen, and someone's not going to sue your ass for creating it. Um, well, you you can definitively answer it, and that's why we're so grateful to have you up here today, like with all our guests. We're coming up on an hour, Trevor. I'm going to hand it straight back over to you, buddy. How would you like to take it from here? Oh, you know, it's been a really interesting conversation. I think there's still a lot of questions bouncing around in my head. I I keep landing in the same resolution, and that time will tell, right? Um, you know, a few months in this space, uh, it. it it's incredible that the, the amount of things that happen in such a short space of time and I get the sense from the conversation we've had today that that's only going to get quicker and quicker and more mind-blowing as we go forward. Um, David, I really do appreciate you giving up some time and coming and talking to us a little bit about your experience with building with AI, some of the approaches that you're taking uh, towards it and hearing from some of the other speakers about what they're seeing in the space as well. It's uh, it's important to have these types of spaces, I think, fairly regularly because it's such a fast-moving environment. Finding time to come together and share what's happening is just a nice way for us all to, to kind of keep our finger on the pulse. So I appreciate everybody for bringing that to the table today. And I will go around the room for any final thoughts. Uh, let's kick off with uh, 8-Bit. Do you have any final thoughts, final questions for today, mate? No, nah, man, and no final questions. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm just really excited to see what's uh, going to be done within uh, these gaming worlds uh, and, uh, and AI. The, the most exciting thing to me is uh, using this technology to make uh, games more immersive because that's what games to me are. Uh, it's a way for me to go into this world, uh, immerse myself in it, forget about the real world, and uh, the the more we can leverage this technology to, to help do that, um, specifically within NPCs and, and enemies and, and whatnot, uh, I'm very interested in. So yeah, if, if any of you here are working on those aspects, you know, keep doing it, keep building. I'm excited to see uh, what, what's in store for the future. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty exciting time to be alive. Never has anyone had the opportunity to witness and experience what we are going through. So uh, for that, it's, it's an incredible time. Uh, Atari, any final thoughts, questions, mate, while you're up? My final thoughts, which are spinning, which when you started talking about the bartender and the NPC, was I was thinking about 10 years from now having a haptic feedback suit and some sort of AR and just talking about immersion i just i want to plant in yeah. david's head because i, I want to keep... <laughs> you, you you and i you and i went to the same place and mo is quietly sitting in the corner thinking he's a bartender i'm wondering if there's some sort of ulterior employment that i can uh that i can put this, this NPC toward yeah. we do have um some haptic feedback gloves that that one of our um smart smart uh, little interns have has, has created um which is interesting so you might not be far off there, mate. Oh, oh, if he wants uh, neural net anything to go by, we won't need haptic anything. Uh, <laughs> it'll be, it'll be well, a blink over kind of moment. How many times a minute can you blink? Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Tari. I uh, love where you go, mate, and it's always a pleasure having you on the stage. I hope to see you again soon. Uh, Kaz, any final thoughts, questions for, for, for no, nothing for me, man. Uh, uh, thanks for putting this on. Appreciate you guys so much, and it was great to hear about the uh, updates from from your universe. Don't stay strangers. Uh, if you haven't explored Arcade to Earn, I can only strongly encourage you to go and do so. Uh, these guys are building some pretty cool stuff uh, and looking to empower the community that gets around them and support them as well. So very cool. Uh, David, any final thoughts from you? Uh, thanks for having me along. Um, always, always a pleasure to jump on and talk AI, and uh, look forward to the next one. Thanks, guys. Sounds good, mate. Uh, Mo, any final thoughts from you? And David, uh, as always, thank you so much for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. Anytime, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah, my final thought is, if you're in a virtual bar and you see an avatar called Top Cat putting date rape drugs in his own drinks, then uh, you should quickly leave that bar. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming on today. Oh, Love doing these spaces. Love it. Love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got a bar out there somewhere in the metaverse, which is uh, always got its doors open. Yep, and a pretty hot bartender. All right, guys, thanks, everybody. Lovely to see you all, and uh, take care out there. And we'll close with our usual banger for your auditory pleasure. See you in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy this content, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and maybe consider watching one of my other videos. Bunnies up.